Hi, and welcome back. In this episode, we'll mock authentication on client, and we'll start with a quick discussion why I want to do that. And then we'll implement authentication with fake token, as well as create our first view exception and mutation. So, let's get down to it. So we got a very simple problem. Our application is basically a personal database, so we need to have users from a get-go. But if we right now start implementing user authentication and registration and all of this stuff, that will take us about 10 episodes before we get to the application itself. That's a sure way to kill a project in its infancy. I started a lot of projects and then just tossed them away after I implemented authentication. When I start on an application nowadays, I prefer to focus on the main features as soon as possible. In our case, it is game management. So instead of developing complete user authentication solution, we'll just mock it in such a clever way that later, when we implement actual feature, we can easily switch. So here I am in terminal in the view project. And first thing that I want to do is to create the initial loading action to be run when application loads for the first time. So our entry point, go back to editor here, is our app.view component. So when it's mounted, I want to fire up initial loading, render loading indicator, and when it's done, render the content itself. And if anything goes wrong, render error message. And this initial loading will load the current user details and other information that is needed on the initial load of application. So we can do it simply by setting mounted hook methods and inside of it we'll just run this initial load. So this initial load is the view exception. So let's import the map actions from views. And now we can fetch this initial load from views with the help of this map actions. So let's define methods and inside of here we're going to deconstruct map action initial load like this. Of course we do not have it yet, but we will implement it in a moment. So this initial load will check for token in local storage and if it's there it will make the request to API to get the current user details. So this function will be asynchronous. So we will use a wait keyword here and a sync keyword here. Okay, so when it's done successfully, I want to set this loading to false. So that just means that loading is over and everything's okay. But if it failed in some way, I want to catch this error. And when we use a sync and await, we use the catch try catch block like this. So I enclose it into try block, and if anything goes wrong, first of all, loading I set again to false, but now I also can set error to true. So if anything goes wrong, we want to render the error to user. So now we need to define this loading and error. So I will do just data here, loading, but if all is going to be true, so we start our application in loading state and then error by default is false. So when we're done with it, we, in either case, we set loading to false and then if something goes wrong, we set error to true. So now in the template we can use three diffs basically. So the first one will be the loading and it will be activated or rendered when loading is set to true, so at the beginning of the, our application loading. Then the second one will be about the content itself, so everything went fine. So for that it's not loading, but also it has no error here. And the third one will be it's not loading, but it has error. So in this case, something went terribly wrong, because being dramatic is what users like very much. Okay, so this is our app component. When it's mounted, we run the initial load. If everything's okay, loading is set to false, so, and we display welcome. If something goes wrong, we just say about it. So now we need to implement this initial load action, so let's go to the store. So here we are, and usually what I prefer to do and what I will do in this project as well, I store all entities in their separate modules, but user model I usually store in the root of the state, so that's why we're going to edit it here in store.js. 
So here, let's define this user object. It will have ID that is null. It will have email, which is an empty string, and username, which is an empty string as well. So now let's define our action. So there's going to be a synchronous function initial load, and it will take only one argument from the view itself, which is context. With the help of it, we will run the mutation. And the first thing that we do here, we just check if local storage has the token, for example, BG tracker JSON web token. So if it is there, we need to do two things. First one, we need to add authorization header in all of our requests. And then we need to make a request with this authorization header and get the current user details. To set default headers with access is very simple. We just do view access defaults. Then we set the headers and into common, we set the authorization Error to equal the value that we want it to have. In our case, we will have the bearer, that's the standard, and then the token itself. So local storage dot bg tracker json web token, like this. So this line of code adds authorization header to each request that we're going to do in the future. And we will do one right away. So let's define it. We await view access get. API out, let's say current user. Okay, so we're making this request, and this request will have the authorization header in it. And after we're done successfully, we want to context commit mutation. Let's call it current user fetched. And we pass down to it the response data user model that will be returned from the server. Okay, very simple, right? Checking for token, setting authorization header for all requests, making the request to get the current user details, and save these details into our Vuex. So now we need to define the mutation. So let's define current user mutation. It takes state and user that we pass down to, so payload. And I prefer with users, I just prefer to do it manually all fields by myself. So I will do state user ID equal to user.id. And another two things here is email and username. Like this. Save it and we're done. Right? So in application, when it's mounted, we fire up the initial load. And then here we check for token, making a request to the server and save the response into the Vuex store. Hey there. Just a quick self-promotion. If you like what I do, find it valuable and want to support my work, I encourage you to go to gsfullstacker.com. There you can become a member for just $13 per month and you'll get access to all content that I've already published, plus 5 new episodes each week and access to Slack community where you can ask questions and get updates. You can cancel anytime, no questions asked. Link in the description. And now, back to the video. So let's go to browser. As you can see here, we still welcoming our user. So we're not making any kind of request to the server. And that is because we do not have token in our local storage. If we go to application, local storage, local host, you can see that there are no token here. So let's add one. We'll add BG tracker JSON web token. And we set it to some kind of a fake token, even not the JSON web token. Let's say something like valid colon one. So that will make it easier to maybe uh, test some you know, edge cases, etc. So the valid, it means just the token is valid. And one is the ID, user ID, basically. So now if we reload the page, something went terribly wrong. So if you go to network, you can see that current user, 404, of course, it's not found. But the important thing is that if we scroll down here in request headers, you have the authorization header that equals to bearer valid one. That's exactly what we want to have on the client. Okay, that's good. We have everything we need on the client, but now we need to have server to send this request to and get data back. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of episodes.